Good morning to you. Mark Sutter of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 22nd of June. Happy Thursday to you. Got a little bit of a cold. I guess the staying up late and handling all of this weakened my immune system. So here I am with a moderate summertime cold. Nothing that'll keep me down. Just makes me sound funny. So let's take a look at what's going on with Cindy. It made landfall last night over southwest Louisiana. The center of circulation did, and you can still see there's some pretty healthy feeder bands moving on well to the east, onshore to the northern and eastern central Gulf Coast areas. Center of circulation now over southwest Louisiana, and the greater Houston area, a little bit of rain showers, but nothing too significant. The winds will start to die down, especially along the coast, but you can clearly see all kinds of moisture bands coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. And this is going to feed a lot of rainfall potential over the deep south and eventually moving across Tennessee and uh, Arkansas, you know, many, many states in the south. We'll take a look at that on a wider image in just a second to give you a better perspective. This is going to affect a lot of people with the potential for some heavy rain. The 8 a.m. Eastern Time or 7 Central Daylight Time Advisory uh, just to give you the stats here, moving north at 12, so it's moving a little faster now. Pressure up to 994, and the winds are maybe around 40 miles per hour. So this will eventually and very quickly degenerate into a tropical depression and then eventually a remnant low, and that'll be that. So if we look at the watch warning graphic, again, you notice all the heat out here in the southwest. Just interesting to point that out. Glad I'm not there. That's too hot for me. I'll take all this juicy atmosphere down here over that. And at least, Cindy, it certainly brought impacts with it. And I think this underscores how people shouldn't diminish, oh, it's just a tropical storm, and it's very messy, and it's not classic looking, so it's really not a big deal. Unfortunately, it's led to fatalities and uh, certainly some property damage here and there. It's not widespread. It's not the worst thing that's ever happened. But for those people... It absolutely is, and, you know, that's just a, a tragedy. It's, it's horrible to hear that, especially with something that so many people are passionate about tracking and keeping up with. It's just like NASCAR. You know, you see the races, they are incredible, the energy and the speed out there, and just that raw power of those cars going as fast as they possibly can. And then you have a wreck, and those are exciting and like, wow, but boy, when one of the drivers gets hurt or killed, it's rare. But when it happens, it leaves a big impact, and it makes the that situation not as, I don't want to say fun, but you know what I mean? It's just it takes the, the thrill out of it completely when you have loss of life in something that we're so passionate about. And that being said, we still have these tornado watches down here, and that's going to be the primary dangerous factor from this storm, this remnant, uh, along with the heavy rainfall and you can see that the yellow areas would be the tornado watch and then the green areas are your flash flood watches and you know we're talking about a pretty good chunk of the deep south here all of louisiana all of mississippi a majority of the western south uh, the southwestern part of alabama now moving into arkansas and tennessee and then this whole mess is going to move up through here and bring some of that potential of heavy rain and severe weather with it so you know, take this seriously. Uh, it's been a big deal for those who had impacted, and certainly travel across I-10 down here. A lot of people have had to deal with travel delays all across this region, as the heavy rains over the last few days have impacted that. On into Texas, we're talking about hundreds of miles of a major interstate system impacted by this event. So, you know, I'm not blowing it up to more than it was, but. It certainly wasn't nothing, that is for sure. So the radar imagery, I really like this wide shot, because you can see the circulation center and the main core of what's left of Cindy is over here. But then you've got this huge area of moisture spreading into parts of western North Carolina, somewhat related directly or indirectly to Cindy uh, and you know, these bands coming off the Gulf of Mexico here. Even in Mississippi, they're still rolling in off the coast. That will come to an end by tonight because this will move on up across this area and be far enough away from the Gulf that these tendrils, if you will, 
tentacles trying to reach out for more moisture just won't be able to do so. Uh, looking at the Storm Prediction Center, and this is what I'm talking about. If we go to the convective outlook for today and tomorrow, you see it's a slight risk today. I'm going to click on these. And, uh, you know, this is important because, you know, the severe weather, and I hate to make a joke here, but that kind of looks like a shark right there, doesn't it? You have the dorsal fin on top right there. And, uh, yeah, so interesting how the graphics work out. But seriously, these slight risk areas uh, up here in the upper Midwest, the around the Great Lakes, not related to Cindy, but all of this down here is. And you can get these isolated tornadoes, <clears throat> and they can be very dangerous. So stay aware. Keep your smartphone or your normal weather radio. You know, here in our hotel room, my colleague and I, carry uh, our smartphones went off last night for the flash flood warning. It makes that god-awful EAS sound. But, hey, it's alerting you to what's possible. And uh, if there's a tornado your way, <clears throat> you need to take shelter. All right? So keep aware. Let's look at the next five days plus. All right? I want to show you this. The 0Z run of the GFS last night. Let me just show you what's what. There's Cindy just before landfall. Uh, here is the east coast of the U.S. over here. All right? Here's the west coast of Africa over on the right-hand side of the screen. And I think, you know, the rest makes sense. Big old area of high pressure sitting out over the Atlantic here. This is the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere showing that vorticity. And you can see the circulation here pretty healthy considering uh, with Cindy. So let's put this into motion and watch what happens over the next 384 hours. I'm going to show you the whole loop. You see Cindy moving in here. This is every hour to start with, pretty high resolution. Cindy moves in across Arkansas out of Louisiana, and then that will eventually move on up through uh, this neck of the woods, so keep watching that. But also, watch what happens out here off the coast of Africa over the next few days. And even the next five days, we are now at 72 hours. And look, piece of energy comes off south of Cape Verde here, very similar to where Matthew came off. And we are only out at about hour 90 to 100, so less than four days out. And there it is. Another Cape Verde system already. And uh, this would only be June the 27th. And you can see it's uh, right there, south of the uh, pretty deep layered ridge here over the Atlantic. If that happens, I'm telling you what, people, this is going to be potentially a heck of a season. Now you see it goes on and never really does anything, but at the end of the loop, uh, and I can stop it and I can show you the last frame, and this is far out in time, I understand that right here, you know, there's another one there and another system there, maybe something trying to develop in the Bay of Campeche. Hey, the GFS trying to show us, shine a light on the fact that this could be a very, very busy hurricane season. Uh, I'll definitely be keeping a watch out the next five days if something develops off the coast of Africa again, it doesn't necessarily matter that it affects anybody directly. It's a signal. And we need to take that signal and say, look, you know, this could be very serious when we get into August and September if we're up to our fourth storm, which the next one, by the way, would be Don. And that was replacing Dennis back from 2005. The name Dennis got retired. And the World Meteorological Organization, the National Hurricane Center, all part of the groups that work with the UN and the WMO select a replacement and it was Don and I'm just gonna leave it at that because you know there's when it happens there's gonna be all kinds of you know what talking about the name Don so whatever but that's the next name on the list and it could happen in the next five days we'll see I'm gonna be watching that very closely you can bet I'll be talking about that again tomorrow alright thanks for enduring this horrible sound coming from my mouth today with this cold uh, and we appreciate you following along we're not done yet Carrie and I are going to go pick up the cameras so if you've been watching live on our YouTube or Ustream channel uh, we'll have our vehicle cam on in just a little bit and I'll have that on all day as I start to head back to North Carolina after picking up our two unmanned cameras from Gulfport and Waveland that ran the full 30 hours exactly what they were designed for with no flaws at all so that's a plus there. Helps us to be ready for when the big boys come. And you know it's just a matter of time, not necessarily in Mississippi, but somewhere, and we want to make sure we're ready. 
Thanks again for tuning in. Mark Seth Hurricane Track dot com here uh, from Mississippi. The last report from here. I'll talk to you again on the discussion tomorrow. <laughs>